Welcome to chapter 6, which is all about chemical composition, or as we will see in just a minute, really the main topic is the mole. And if you're wondering, what the heck did he just say mole? The furry lives underground creature? Not quite. We'll see. First, before we get there, let's talk about donuts, because why not? I love donuts, probably a little bit too much. Um, but when you go to a store and you want to order a bunch of donuts, because you are getting donuts for a bunch of people, um, do not go to the store and order uh, a dozen donuts just for you. Um, that's too many donuts just for you. You'll probably make yourself sick. Uh, but if you're getting donuts for a bunch of people, you go in and you uh, will order the donuts usually by the dozen, especially if it's a very large group. Um, you might get one dozen or two dozen or three dozen, just depending on how many it is, but you always get the donuts by the dozen. You don't go in and say, I would like to get 36 donuts. You go in and you say, I would like to get three dozen donuts. Now, the dozen that we're talking about here is used for a few different reasons. Uh, number one, it simplifies things. So it's just it's easier to think about having a certain number of a dozen than it is to try and figure out how many individual donuts that would be. If you were getting donuts for a very large group and you were getting five or six dozen donuts, it's easier to think of it in terms of the number of dozens that you need than it is to think about it in terms of the actual individual donuts. So it just it takes larger numbers and it simplifies it uh, to where it's easier to think about with smaller numbers. And that's just the way humans are, really. Everyone is this way. It's just easier to think about uh, smaller numbers than it is to think about really large numbers. So it's nice in that way. Uh, but you also use a dozen because it is a standardized value that everyone uses, or at least everyone in the U.S. I don't know if it's an international thing or not, uh, but at least in the U.S., um, everyone knows what a dozen is, and you can get dozens of things like donuts, uh, and it's that standardized value that not only everyone understands, but you actually have uh, cartons and things like this that are manufactured to hold exactly a dozen donuts. Uh, and so when someone is filling in, or someone is collecting a dozen donuts, they don't even really need to count it. They just fill in until the, uh, the carton is full. So it's, it's a method of convenience. It helps us to deal with these large numbers, uh, and uh, it helps us avoid errors as well um, when we're dealing with this. Uh, so if we continue with this idea of a dozen, and we expand it just a little bit. Let's say we wanted to know how many calories are in a dozen donuts. Well, one of the ways to do that would be to go and take a dozen donuts and actually measure the number of calories in each of those things. But that's not terribly uh, productive, it's, or it's, well, it's not a good use of time, I should say. Um, you're gonna be wasting a lot of time measuring the number of calories in 12 donuts. What would be easier would be to measure the number of calories in one donut and then just multiply by 12. Because again, each of the donuts should at the very least be roughly the same. They might be slightly different, but I would even make the argument uh, that if you do that enough times, if you average enough times, that you're going to get a better uh, number than if you uh, measure every single one individually. Um, but anyway, that's, that's neither here nor there. Um, if we want to get the number of calories in a dozen donuts, you can take the number of calories in one and multiply by 12. Now this is going to be different for different kinds of donuts though. So if you think about these donuts here, the little uh, donut type donuts versus this kind of donut, one of these is going to have, uh, one of these dozens of donuts is going to have more calories 
than the other. Specifically, this one. This is going to have more calories than this. Now there's a few different reasons why this might be, but if you think about these donuts versus these donuts, the main reason is that these are just bigger. The Krispy Kreme donuts are physically larger. They have more stuff in them than the donuts. They're made of roughly the same material. It's mostly sugar and fat and, and flour and, and things like that. It's, that's mostly what it is. Uh, and there might be a slight difference in the material, but it's not a huge difference. But the main reason why these would be more calories is just they're bigger. They're, I would say they're probably close to twice as big or so, maybe a little bit more than twice as big, um, since these are more dense than these are. It's not quite as extreme as it looks at first. But these are still definitely bigger. So you can have a dozen of one kind of donut, and you can have a dozen of a different kind of donut, and they can be very different uh, both in terms of their taste, they can be very different in terms of the number of calories uh, between the two dozens of donuts, but they are still both just a dozen of donuts. So they can have certain things in common, but that does not mean that they are identical. Just because you have a dozen of one thing does not mean that it is the same as the dozen of something else. So, this leads us to the question, which you're probably wondering, is he ever going to stop talking about donuts? What is the point of this? Well, the point is, we use the concept of a dozen in our uh, everyday lives, or every week life, maybe. We use it fairly often. In chemistry, we do the same thing except we have a number that is a lot bigger than a dozen. So one dozen is 12 of something. In chemistry, we use, instead of a dozen, we use a mole. And a mole is just a number of something in the same way that a dozen is just 12 of something. But for a mole, the number is not 12, the number is this, which is a little bigger than 12. Uh, as a matter of fact, it is, <laughs> I would suggest, immeasurably uh, bigger. Well, that's not entirely true. It actually is measurable how much bigger it is. Uh, maybe a more accurate term would be it is unfathomably larger than 12. And I do mean that. You really, even though you might think you do, you don't really have a grasp of how large this number is. This number is truly unfathomably large. Uh, not quite to the point of infinity, but uh, it is so large that we just kind of, we look at this number and all we can think of is, wow, that's really big. But we don't really have anything to compare it to because nothing in our everyday life is comparable to this. Uh, so this is the number that represents a mole of something. Uh, this is also sometimes called Avogadro's number. Uh, and it is usually written not like this, because nobody wants to write out all these zeros. Usually it is written as 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. That is what it is normally written as. So if we say we have a mole of something, we are saying we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of that thing. So if we have a mole of iron, for example, we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd iron atoms. And if we had a mole of donuts, we would have 6.22 times 10 to the 23rd donuts. And I don't know this for sure, but I would bet that if we had a mole of donuts, it would occupy half of our solar system. <laughs> it would, it would for cert, it would surely be uh, at least the size of the Earth, 
again, it's just so hard to fathom how large this number is. It's hard to gauge exactly how large uh, that number of donuts would be. But it would definitely be on the order of planetary bodies, um, that number of donuts. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use Avogadro's number, which is this number, uh, to convert between uh, the number of moles of something and the actual number of particles of something. And by the way, this is the little typo there. That should be a uh, superscript of uh, 23. should be raised to the 23rd. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, like it is here. So just a little typo there. So we can use this relationship. One mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of whatever it is that we're looking at. We can use this as a conversion factor to convert back and forth between number of atoms, uh, or as we'll see later, a number of molecules, and the number of moles of something. Okay, so let's look at one of those examples here. This is example 6.1. It says a silver ring contains 1.1 times 10 to the 22 silver atoms. How many moles of silver are in the ring? Well, we're going to use this relationship here to convert between moles and atoms. And what that's going to look like is we have 1.1 times 10 to the 22 atoms. And if we plug in our conversion factor, we're going to put the number of atoms here on the bottom so that it cancels out with this one. And that will leave us with, let me type that in my calculator real quick. is 0 0.018 and let's see I get only two sig figs so just the one eight there moles of silver so that is how many moles of silver are in that uh, silver ring so that then leads us to our really big question. Why the heck do we use that number? Why would we use this unfathomably large number that seems to just be pulled at random uh, from who knows where? Well, if you're curious about that, you'll have to come back for the next uh, video because we'll talk about that so I'll see you in the next one.